Peace, family. Peace. Um, I'd just like to first say I'm back. I'd like to secondly thank all the family who were supportive supportive of my uh, trip to New York. And I'd like to thirdly thank uh, Art Speaks for allowing me to come over and speak at their art event. Um, the event was a success. Uh, the documentary that myself and a Doink Vision uh, shot was definitely well received. The question and answers went very well, and all round it was just a it was a good trip to NYC. Um, I definitely go back. I think they want me back. Um, so I'm going to try and build. I'm trying to build a little a little base over there, mini base, a uh, home away from home. Maybe over in New York. We'll wait and see. Um, so on that front, it was all a success. You guys are going to be seeing the documentary soon. I'm going to release that soon and um, see what you guys think. They may be, you know, they may be showing it somewhere else in uh, in the US. So we're kind of working that one out. On another note. I'm sure the family have been seeing this Libya situation go down and it's very interesting to watch, you know, uh, black bodies still being sold in Africa, um, which basically means slavery hasn't stopped. They told you slavery had stopped and it hasn't. So it's interesting to me I'm trying to figure out whether or not these uh, black people are Muslim or they're quote unquote Kafir um, I don't know yet however to me it doesn't matter because whether you're a Muslim or a non-Muslim and you're being sold as a slave in a Muslim country it doesn't matter just like it didn't matter as a slave on the plantation that you were Christian okay Yourself and your slave master on the plantation both had the same religion, but it didn't matter how many times you praised Jesus as your savior You still got whipped. You still got told to go out into the field and pick cotton It didn't matter that you were a Christian or you identified yourself as a Christian Just like in this instance, it doesn't actually matter whether or not these black people are Muslims or non-Muslims because even if they're Muslims They're still being sold even if they're non-Muslims, they're still being sold. So, you know, this, these black people can scream Allahu Akbar all they want. They're still being sold by other Muslims. And I'm wondering how long it's going to take black Muslims to kind of come out and kind of see this and have a voice on it. Because it's very interesting to me that right now, I think the black Muslim voice on this subject is quite silent. I haven't really heard much from a lot of black Muslims um, on this issue. And what's interesting is that I brought this issue up about over a year ago when I had a debate at Speaker's Corner with Hamza talking about the Arab Muslim enslavement of black people and how they used to be castrated, which was a definite tactic of the... Uh, Arab Muslim when it came to stopping the black slave from procreating, right? And I got a very immature response from a lot of Muslims that basically said, why are you talking about the penis? Why are you talking about a black penis? And I'm like, well, it's a very real um, thing that they used to do. They used to castrate black slaves, you know, take their penises off so they couldn't, you know, reproduce. So this has been going on for 1,500 years. And I'm still wondering when black people are going to get it because I've said this so many times before, it doesn't matter what system you choose to take on. You can choose to take on Islam or Christianity. You're still seen as an N-I-G-G-E-R and you're still treated as such. So it doesn't matter, again, what religious system you take on. Within that system, you are going to be at the bottom of the social economic ladder and the Libya situation again proves my point and the thing is you don't need the Libya situation to prove my point we can go around the globe and see many um, situations which can prove my point so you can scream Jesus and you can scream Allah and you can praise Muhammad but in that system you're still a nigger right white supremacy doesn't care about what religion you hold 
He doesn't care about what party you choose to uh, vote for at the election. It doesn't matter. You are still going to be treated that way. And so it's saddening to me to listen to the silence of black Muslims, particularly on this plight. Black people are getting together and, you know, saying a lot. They're protesting outside of, you know, the Libyan embassy and so forth. But black Muslims, like, where are they? That's what I want to know. Why, you know, are they looking at their their Arab Muslim uh, brothers and saying, listen, like, seriously, what's going on with our people? Because, you know, Islam isn't a race, you know, it's a conglomerate of people of all races that subscribe to Islam. However, it seems to me within Islam, the black bodies get treated the worst, male or female. But you're all Muslim. Same thing in Christianity, black bodies get treated the worst, but you're all Christians. So, you know, black people, I'm seriously, you know, I'm seriously wondering when you're going to get it. You know, um, it, to me, a religion, the, if the religion can't clean, clean house, you know, this religion is divine. The religion supposed, are supposedly divine, they're from God, right? If the religions can't clean up white supremacy, then what can? If the most divine people, if the most divine scripture can't clean the heart of white supremacy, then you've got absolutely no chance of cleaning up white supremacy because this is supposed to be divinity, right? This is supposed to be a people who are chosen from God or the scriptures that are chosen from God. And within that, you still have white supremacy. You still have slavery. And I'm saying... It's very simple to understand when you go into the religion. If the religion condones slavery and now you have slavery in the religion, it is not rocket science to figure out why there is slavery within the religion. I think people need to really look into the religions that condone slavery. Um, you can go into the Bible, to con which uh, can also condone slavery and you can go into Islam, you can go into the Quran and you will see slavery condoned. Some Muslims may argue, oh, but, but even though slavery is condoned, it shows you how to treat a slave, right? And to treat your slave like X. But the bottom line is from the slave's point of view, I don't give a damn how you treat me. If I'm still your property, I don't want to be your property. So you could give me a house, you could, you know, you could give me some money. But if I don't have my freedom, and I'm still yours, and I'm still bound to you, I don't care. I really don't care. And so the fact that people try to condone slavery with some kind of, you know, a rule, oh, we got, but we got rules and regulations to slavery. I mean, you are a slave, but the, you know, there's rules and regulations, we're going to regulate slavery. Well, a slave and a person who's in bondage doesn't give a damn about regulations. They want their freedom, okay? And so we need to kind of really analyze the systems that we take on. We need to analyze this um, system of white supremacy that basically keeps us or attempts to subjugate us and keep us at the bottom of the social economic ladder because no one's going to help your black ass except for you. We can see this. Jesus ain't going to help. Muhammad ain't going to help. Allah's not going to help. This has been an ongoing process for hundreds of years. And if it was going to stop, and if they were going to help, I'm sure they would have helped by now, right? Because black people have been going through the slave stuff for a very, very long time. And it's gone from the slavery in the Arab world, well, which is still going on, to Jim Crow, you know, to the KKK, to the police shootings now. You know, and Jesus ain't helped. He ain't come yet to help you guys. You know, Allah ain't come to help you guys. You know, how long you're going to wait on the help? You are the help that you're seeking. Okay, no manna is going to come out of the sky to help you uh, in your situation uh, with white supremacy. You're going to have to do that yourself, black people. Okay, you're going to have to do that yourself. And if you're waiting on somebody to come out of the sky to help you, you're going to be waiting for a very, 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 very long time. Because what I've noticed is that this is generational um, impetus, impotence, 
impotency. Is that a word? To be impotent, right? And to hand down basic... To hand down a feeling of helplessness to the next generation is, a, is very sickening to me. So to hand down waiting on somebody to save you, I'm not going to hand that down to my children. I'm going to tell my children to help themselves. Okay, but to hand down this thing of, oh, don't worry, baby, don't worry, in the next life, when so-and-so comes back, we'll be good. You're castrating the next generation. You are castrating people from helping themselves. You are giving somebody a saviour who is yet to turn up 2017 years later. And if I was to be, if I was to tell you, I've said before, I'm going to be back in an hour and I didn't turn up, you'd wait half an hour tops before you say, you know, I'm not waiting on this guy anymore. But you can wait 2017 years for this dude to show up out of the sky. He still ain't shown up and still hand down that same time limit to your children and to your children's children and tell them, no, 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 no. It was supposed to happen in our lifetime, but it's going to happen in your lifetime. And then that generation will say, oh, it was supposed to happen in my lifetime, but it's going to happen in your lifetime and so on and so on and so on. Because your great, 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 great grandmother told her children that Jesus was coming back. And he ain't come yet. Right? And your grandmother probably told you that Jesus is coming back. And he ain't back yet. And your mum is probably going to tell you that Jesus is coming back. And he ain't come back. And I just don't want you to tell your children, okay, to be waiting on some dude that ain't going to turn up. Because Jesus must be a black dude. Because his timing is off. <laughs> We know black people are timing. Jesus must be a black dude. His timing is off, right? Stop waiting on people like this. That's all I've got to say about that. So this Libya situation, family, I really uh, hope it's opened your eyes to um, the treatment of black bodies globally. And I would love for, you know, for black people to really understand the times that they're in and that no one is going to save them but themselves and that regardless of your political affiliation or religious affiliation you're still a nigger under white supremacy and so get that in your head seriously drill it into your head doesn't matter which god you serve doesn't matter which party you vote for at the ballot you in this society are still looked upon as an ne N-I, sorry, G-G-R. So, family, that's all I've got to say. That's my that's my uh, war report uh, for now. And um, I will speak to you soon. Peace, family. Peace.